I would like to present uh, uh, today the eight-year outcomes of uh, phase three randomized trial of conventional versus hypofractionated high-dose IMRT for prostate cancer, the CHIP trial, CHHIP trial, which was uh, published in Lancet. And this is the update from the CHIP trial. I'm Dr. Gagan Saini. Uh, I'm uh, part of uh, Max uh, Institute of Cancer Care. Um, so uh, we go into the background and then we will, you know, start with what uh, is, the, is the crux of the presentation. The CHIP trial is a non-inferiority trial that was uh, designed to determine the efficacy and safety of hypofractionated RT. The trial's previous five-year results were reported in Lancet in 2016 and where they were, they had, uh, you know, compared 74 in 37 versus 60 in 20 versus 57 grade. And they found that this uh, 60 and uh, 74, they were not inferior to each other. And 57 and 74 were not inferior to each other, whereas 57 and 60, 57 was inferior. So that is why 60 and 20 is, uh, uh, was the proposed standard of care. The results were five years. Uh, we come to the third bullet point. Moderate hypofractionation is now an international standard of care. I'm sure uh, my radiation oncology colleagues will agree. That many of us are using moderate hypofractionation. Um, but, but, with, but with patients remaining at a risk of recurrence for many years, the information on long-term outcomes is also very important. While CHIP trial does establish non-inferiority in terms of five-year results, the long-term outcomes are also important, and that's what is uh, being done in this presentation. Um, a pre-planned analysis of eight years was recently presented in ASCO. Uh, between 2002 and 2011, 3,000 odd patients with no negative T1B to T3A localized prostate cancer with risk of seminal vesicle involvement of less than 30% were randomized. One is to one is to one. A uh, couple of important things. If you wish to practice hypofractionation, please remember that T3Bs were not taken and also seminal vesicle involvement of less than 30% was not considered. So these were the three schedules. This is something I've told you about 74, 37, 16, 20, and 57. Androgen deprivation was done and at least three months prior to radiotherapy and continued until the end of RT. On an average, patients got six months ADT. Some of them got uh, uh, 150 milligrams of bicalutamide and some of them got the usual uh, ADT, uh, the LHRH analogs. Uh, the primary endpoint was time to biochemical failure as per the Phoenix guidelines, that is NADR plus two, uh, or clinical reasons. The non-inferiority design was specified at critical hazard ratio of 1.208 for each hypofractionated uh, schedule. So that is what is the hazard ratio which they had fixed for any uh, non-inferiority. Late toxicity was assessed at five years and that is what is presented in this trial even. And this trial as usual was an ITT intent to treat. So uh, just um, before we go to results, I'll just like to brush, uh, brush up on the fact that most of the patients in this trial were intermediate risk patients. And uh, there were about 12% uh, high-risk patients. And those 12% high-risk patients were then later upscaled to 19% when they did a central pathology review. Uh, so about 20% high-risk patients and rest were lower intermediate risk and all of them got six months of ADT. Uh, so this is one of the things which, uh, uh, yeah. so, so this results, are, and, and they gave only prostate, RT prostate only radiotherapy just uh, for uh, uh, you know, practice clarity sake. Uh, so we come to the results. Uh, median follow-up was 9.2 years and eight years biochemical uh, failure-free survival were, uh, you know, given in table one. So this is the table one. And you can see that the biochemical failure-free survival are, uh, you know, similar to each other. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and the uh, differences are not statistically significant. Uh, the eight-year results were essentially the same as five-year results confirming non-inferiority. So even at eight years, the non-inferiority is confirmed. The results of secondary endpoints were similar as well. 176 patients developed metastasis over the course of study. And metastasis free survival was 95.6, 95.3, and 94.8 in 74, 60, and 59, 57 gray group, uh, respectively, not 59, this is a typo. There were 567 deaths. Uh, which were, uh, you know, overwhelmingly by non-prostate cancer mortality, which brings me to the point made by the, my very lucid previous speaker, that overall survival in prostate cancer is very, very, uh, you know, confusing. Definitely cause-specific survival is the way to go. And um, uh, so as far as safety is concerned, clinical assessments, 
uh, of late toxicity were similar across all groups. You can see that the late toxicity is not very high. Often it is discussed this late toxicity in radiotherapy in many foras. And this is a combined fora of uh, urologists and radiation oncologists and medical oncologists. So this is the bowel toxicity and bladder toxicity rates. They are less than 2%. And even with hypofractionation or with regular fractionation, so uh, this is the last slide. Uh, the conclusion is that biochemical failure rates of over 80% and long-term follow-up confirms that 60 in 20 is a non-inferior uh, non regimen to 74 in 37. And late side effects were very low across all groups. So these results support uh, that we can continue the use of 60 in 20 as standard of care for men with localized prostate cancer. Uh, I thank you uh, for your time. I may, may I just add a practice point uh, from my experience that please don't use 60 and 20 in uh, patients who are having a high IPSS, uh, because when you have a high IPSS, this edema, which is induced by uh, 60 and 20 regimen, can lead to uh, a little morbidity. And you know, uh, we don't want our patients to be getting that morbidity. Uh, some patients even get bladder outlet obstruction. I thank you uh, for your invitation and uh, time.